be below, and they're doing this on purpose. This is the plan. They can't have, how can they rip you off if you've got a check and balance, like the Labor Department stepping in and say, hell, you can't do that. You know what minimum wage would go to if I allow you to manipulate markets like that? All you special interest groups that are colluding together to raise our prices, and then you call it capitalism? That's not capitalism. The progress has a definition under capitalism. It leads to universal prosperity. So heal the division with knowledge, okay? And say 90%, that's a lot of socialists. That's a lot of capitalists in that 90%. Okay, we all saw eye to eye on how immoral, how wrong, how un-American, how anti-capitalistic, whether we understood it intellectually or just intuitively. We understood how wrong this was. Conservatives, liberals, Democrats, and Republicans. Do you understand how healing that knowledge can be? So spread that word. That's all I want. I just want people to spread the word, man. All, I'm trying to be an influencer to the influencers, okay? I, I really, that, you know, I, it's worth it to do what I do. I, I'm trying to be happy here. And I see it is not the kind of thing that you go alone. It's a team thing, okay? I, 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 I've got to bind the wounds on the collective body of humanity where they're hemorrhaging, okay? And I, this is how I bind the wounds on my own body as an individual, and then we've got to go out and bind them and help other people to understand as an individual they can be empowered with the knowledge and the truth and go against these evil grand puppeteers. Trace those strings up to the highest offices, to the top of the pyramid here. God has given us the power to do it. And there's going to be the right time in history when they're not going to be able to stop it. They can try to be violent with assassinations and all this stuff, but there's a point and they know we're reaching that point. <laughs> when the knowledge is going to reach a critical mass. It's literally from the hand of God, this knowledge and this empowerment through the knowledge that God's just forcing his way here. And it's not through intimidating these people, uh, rattling their cage and making them detest us and then giving them a reason to, to, to oppose us. No, we've got to make them look like they're wrong to oppose us. The truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Who could be opposed to that? So you've been exposed. You're evil. All I'm saying, I don't want to incarcerate you. I, I don't want to kill you. I just say repent or perish because, you know, you're on the highway to hell if you don't believe in uh, setting the captives free. It's as simple as that. It's a biblical term. This is what Jesus said. He, he said he came to set the captives free. Okay. Remember, he's talking about the poor that are being oppressed, the downtrodden. That's who it was all about. God wants us to be free because he knows because he, he wants us to be happy. It all makes perfect sense. God is our, like our parents, our divine parents. I don't know why more Christians don't use that analogy, that allegory for God, because it, it's very fitting biblically, because the very first chapter establishes that God is a we. Yes, God is a we. Even though I'm monotheistic, it's just that God is the yin-yang thing, okay? It's the male-female thing. I mean, every creature, every insect, you know, it's curious, look at dogs sniffing each other's behinds. Right away, they want to know what you were born, male or female. I mean, so, you know, if we've got issues there, you know, sexually speaking, it's, we would have had them anyhow. The difference is, is that it wouldn't have been tainted with the knowledge of good and evil. We, we wouldn't have known there was anything wrong with, you know, looking at each other's n nude bodies, you know, but now we're all screwed up. Now it's a big deal. It's just, it's just like the money thing. I mean, that's two areas we're very different from any every other creature. We believe it's immoral to wear clothes. Okay, we believe it's immoral to be broke. Okay, because the ones that are successful, okay, if you're to be successful, otherwise you're a failure, and that being a failure is always bad, right? So it must be immoral by extension, right? By default, it's bad to be poor, right? Because you're a failure, and, and being a failure is bad. You get my logic here? So, you know, uh, if you're naked, that that's a bad thing. You're immodest. You're, you know, maybe even people say you're a pervert or something. And I'm the last guy you're going to catch walking around downtown naked. Believe I'm very cognizant of, you know, my body. But, you know, I don't want to be known as a prude either because I think the body is a beautiful thing in all honesty. And, uh, you know, there's a time and a place, but I, I, you're never going to, let's put it this way, you're never going to catch me naked in some place where it's unexpected, okay? I'm not a flasher, okay? So uh, I try to watch the verbal masturbation, and, uh, 
And this is what I think, you know, I met last week, I was talking about Alex Jones engaging in that. You know, I just pulled that, came out of thin air. But, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, pick on him. We can all engage in verbal masturbation. I mean, look at me doing this monologue. People could accuse me of verbal masturbation, whatever. But the point is, I'm not going to reach a climax. I'm not, you know, going to rant to the point of frenzy. Uh, I am going to try to be more selective with my words and remember what Jesus taught about it. You know, that it's not what goes in our mouths that defiles what comes out. That's a very powerful statement. I mean, that's, that's a warning. And then you look in the book of James, chapter 3, and how eloquently and poetically and powerfully it's written and the warnings about watching the things we say. I mean, you know, so... No, we don't want to do that, you know, but, uh, you know, we're very distinct. Animals don't have any use for money, okay, and animals don't have any use for clothes, none of them. But look at humans. We are by far and away more intelligent. I know some people will dispute that. They'll say, oh, my gosh, look at how smart the dolphins and the porpoises are and all this, the primates and all this. Look, 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 you show me them put a toy on Mars and then I'll, then we'll talk, okay, but that's what human beings, we are gods, literally the image and likeness of God. We should be empowered on that basis, on that level. God's children, small g, but all the properties, all the potential, uh, 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 infinite potential, a boundless potential. I mean, because once we open one door in wonderment and we go, wow, now there's all these other avenues. So our, our knowledge is expanding exponentially as time goes on and we are just incredible i mean you know it's practically scientific to uh to have faith you know it really is it, it's like wow why wouldn't you i mean it, it you know for for all logic look it, it's like how could this stuff be just happenstance how could all creation this whole male female paradigm how, why would we need it if things just just oh well they just fell together i mean it's absurd it's like saying you could take apart your laptop, set all the pieces next to each other, lettered, numbered, whatever. So if some, you know, I don't know. Look, it's just, it's just too weird that this would all happen because your body is very intricate. All the circuitry in your brain, it's all, it's just, we've got electricity flowing through us. All the creatures do. Okay, this is, this is phenomenal. This is cosmic. Okay, so we're all gods and we should all be empowered like that and think of ourselves thusly. This is a cosmic thing, an eternal thing. And your faith should be based on logic and reason, that it makes sense to believe that there is an almighty creator God and that this God has good intentions for us and we should listen and that it's not hidden from us, that God needs us to know what he's like, his character, nature, and personality in order for us to follow it, to reflect it, to represent him properly, and to go out and win friends, because that's what it's all about. It's all about bringing people the good news of the gospel of Christ. And anybody in their right mind could say, well, yeah, that's all good news. I mean, this whole idea of getting to live forever in paradise, I mean, who, who, who in their right mind would turn that down? But right now, we got people killing themselves right and left. Not thinking about, wow, you know, he's not saying that you're going to have, you know, you're going to live forever in your flesh and body because a lot of people would reject that on his face anyhow because everybody knows we're mortal. Everybody knows you're born, you live, and you die. You know, the only two things that are certain in life are death and taxes, right? And, uh, you know, what do people fear the most? Uh, they fear public speaking more than they fear death. So, I mean, it's just... <clears throat> no, but we don't need to believe in death either. Jesus proved repeatedly that that's a big scam. That's a lie from the pit of hell, basically. That's it. We can't die. Okay. This is the point, man. I mean, it's just body after body because it's just like when you go to sleep at night. You don't give a crap about your body anymore. You're just resting it. You know it needs this period of rejuvenation. That's the way it was made. We all know if you don't sleep, you go insane. You die eventually you go mad right so when you're dreaming you have a lucid dream do you or do you not have a body okay in your dream you do have a body so you understand uh, there's a whole cyber reality out there that can't be taken away from us that's that you know life after life and you have a body and end of story and that you can't really your body cannot really be threatened so this resurrection of the dead thing and this uh, and this um, 
people talk about, a lot of Christians talk about this uh, rapture. Okay, that is in scripture, but it says, it talks about it like a twinkling of an eye. So this body, <laughs> some people are never going to have to give this body up. There's going to be a generation that's never going to taste death. That's the way the story goes. Read it for yourself. And that's the twinkling of an eye. When the body is changed, the mortal is changed into the immortal. The perishable meets the imperishable in the twinkling of an eye. That's the rapture that so many people talk about. That's the promise that's going to happen. But the resurrection of the dead just means that God's going to take all the atoms that he needs that are never leave our atmosphere and every person ever lived on the face of the earth 